KCOD Broadcasting weaves the listening environments of 99.9 WQRC, Ocean 104.7, WFCC Classical 107.5, Cape Country 104, and CapeCon.com's website experience to reflect the lifestyles of the people who live, work, and play on Cape Cod. We hope that you enjoy this podcast. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. I'm here in the studio with Dr. Mallory Hatfield, a cardiologist in Hyannis, and Dr. Alyssa Thompson, a cardiologist cardiologist at Cape Cod Hospital. Welcome to the show to you both. Thank Thank you, you. Laura, for having us. Now, February is Heart Month, and apparently, and, and I was surprised to hear this, heart disease is the number one killer of men and women in the U.S. Do most people know about that? Unfortunately, they don't. And unfortunately, more importantly, I think from a woman's perspective, most women don't realize that the number one killer of people uh is not only heart disease, but more women than men have died from heart disease since 1994. Every year since 1994, more women than men have died from heart disease. And most women are trying to get their families to the doctor. They're trying to make sure their husbands, their children are well and taken care of, and they forget to take care of themselves. So I think Dr. Hatfield and I both want to get the message out to women, especially to take care of themselves and and be aware of their heart risk. And what do you think are some of the reasons behind that statistic, Dr. Hatfield? Well, I think lifestyle choices is definitely a contributing factor, Um, but also um, lack of information, I think. Um, I think women are more focused on um, preventing breast cancer and and worried about breast cancer. And and in that respect, we as cardiologists in the community can take a, you know, a page out of the playbook from the American Cancer Society, who's been incredibly successful in educating the public and physicians about breast cancer prevention. And and we, we certainly can do a much better job in educating the public regarding heart disease. And when you talk about risk factors and and lifestyle, what are some of the, the main points of that, that you let people know? Well, that the simplest thing is really exercise. And and more and more data is coming in that um, even if you have other risk factors, exercising, you can mitigate a lot of these other risk factors for premature heart disease. In fact, you know, we, we, we um, stress so many things like maintaining a healthy weight, eating healthy, not smoking, um, making sure that you're not diabetic, um, paying attention to your family um, history. But the reality is is that a lot of these risk factors are not modifiable, meaning you can't do anything about it. However, exercise is completely within your control. And even if you are overweight, even if you had high blood pressure and high cholesterol, just by exercising alone, you markedly reduce your risk. So exercise is something everyone can agree on, because every day it seems we hear about a new food that is it good, is it bad, and and the other day it was eggs. I thought, oh, now eggs are good. What do you tell people about diet? Well, I mean, I I certainly emphasize um, eating healthily and heart-healthy foods. But, you know, the patients who see me, they, they will tell you that not only do I emphasize what they eat, it's the quantity In in many ways, I I tell people if you enjoy some foods that are not considered heart healthy, have it, but have it in moderation. And be very cognizant that you are having something that you really ought not to have. Really enjoy it, and then move on to something that's heart healthier. Good advice. Now, one thing, when I was looking up the different statistics on this, and I noticed that it talked about that heart disease strikes regardless of age, race, body type. Actually, that surprised me because I often think of that as a disease of older people or, as you say, overweight people. And I guess that's not necessarily true. Dr. Thompson? No, it's it's not true. I mean, as a, as a woman in this country, you have about a one in three chance of dying of a heart attack just because you're an American woman, not to mention the fact that if you're overweight or obese or if you have hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, all of the things that Dr. Hatfield mentioned, you're at risk. But it can happen at any time. And unfortunately, in this country, we're seeing more and more younger people having heart attacks and becoming seriously debilitated because of heart attacks in their 40s. Uh, One of the things I wanted to echo about what Dr. Hatfield was saying about modifiable risk factors is about smoking. Unfortunately, the rates of smoking in younger women in this country are skyrocketing. And if there's one message I think the both of us would like to get across uh, in this discussion is that if you don't smoke, don't start. It's the easiest other modifiable risk factor uh, that you have for heart attack 
among other diseases. And, and smoking carries a 50% mortality rate from a disease related directly to tobacco use. And we've known that for 50 years, but still people decide to smoke and pick up the cigarettes and continue to do so. So that's a really important piece of information people need to know about. Now, if, if someone has heart disease in their family, and we, you talked about the risk factors, they're a healthy person, they have it in their family, it might be sort of demoralizing to think, what can I do? I already exercise, I already eat right, but this is in my family. I kind of look at that as a glass half full. If you are making these choices to eat healthfully and exercise and maintain a healthy body weight and and pursue these modifiable risk factors effectively, then you are, in fact, lowering the risk that's conferred to you by your family history. So if your mom had a heart attack when she was 60, but you run and you eat a very low-carbohydrate, low-fat diet, and you don't use a lot of salt, and your blood pressure is well-maintained, then you're modifying that that risk that you really can't take care of altogether, but at least you're doing every other thing possible. So it shouldn't be a, a demoralizing factor. It should be something that you're really aware of, and you work with it. And so we're all agreed that exercise is key, but I always think of the, in terms of heart health, it really sh- is supposed to be aerobic. Is that true or does it really matter? It, it does matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, ideally, everyone should be um, doing aerobics exercise. And the data is clear that vigorous exercise at least three to four days a week um, reduces your risk. And it does that via m- many um pathophysiological pathways. Um, It increases the pliability and the plasticity of the heart muscle. It increases the pliability, plasticity of your arterial supply, and that in turn decreases the risk of hyper hypertension, um, congestive heart failure, um, stroke, and death. And so ideally, if someone is physically capable, they should be doing vigorous aerobics level exercise. However, there are some people who aren't able to do so, either because of physical limitations, arthritis, whatever it may be. Um, The reality is, is that a little bit of exercise is better than no exercise. Moderate exercise is better than mild exercise. And vigorous exercise is better than everything. So even if someone does not have the time to do the, the vigorous exercise regime that we would ideally like everyone to do, walk every day. I mean, that's better than doing nothing. Now, the Cape Cod Healthcare website has a number of videos on the site about the issue of heart health, and I was looking through them and interested that one of them talked about that women sometimes have issues with heart health because they play down their symptoms. Unfortunately, and maybe it's because we, you know, many of us have children and bear children and kind of put up with a lot of extra pain and suffering, uh, we sort of play down a lot of our symptoms. And many women um, will think that their symptoms of indigestion or shortness of breath or um, fatigue are just that they're too tired and it's not their heart. And unfortunately, heart disease comes in many different flavors and it's not just that you're going to have typical crushing chest pain in the middle of your chest, you may have a variety of different symptoms from nausea to fatigue to shortness of breath. And so if you are feeling any of those symptoms and they're out of the usual for you, that's what I tell my patients is this indicator that they need to talk to their doctor about getting further testing and evaluation for heart disease. Um, If it's unusual for you, get it checked out. But I think everyone has probably heard at one time or another in their lives about someone who they had lunch with someone that day and then they weren't feeling perfect and they died that night of a heart condition. And so I think that that, that probably does come up. Do you hear that a lot in your in your business? Absolutely. Absolutely. My friend was perfectly healthy one day and he dropped dead the next. And unfortunately, that person may have not been listening to his or her body telling them that they were on the edge of having a major uh, problem, whether it's a heart attack or a fatal arrhythmia. So it is very important to be aware of what's going on with your body, to tell your doctor, to seek medical attention, um, and even have a doctor. A lot of people don't go to the doctor because they think, you know, I was healthy when I was 25. I was healthy when I had my kids. Now that I'm 50, 
I'm probably still healthy. Well, it's better to have a physician check your blood sugar, check your cholesterol, make sure that your blood pressure is in a normal range, make sure that you're not getting a little bit more overweight than you should be. All of those things are very important uh, to pay attention to. So, yes, it, it does happen quite frequently, and we try to get the word out to people as much and as often as we can to pay attention to your body and know your body and know your vital statistics so that if something changes, your medical professional can can help you find further evaluation for it. And it's interesting that you bring that up, that some people skip going to the doctor because you think of an annual physical as something that most people do. And I guess people feel like, well, I'd actually, if there is bad news, maybe I don't want to hear about it. But in fact, with heart health, health, I would think that very important to get it early. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, our goal is not only to educate our community, we also want to educate our colleagues because the, the data is clear. It, it's not only that the community aren't um, completely um, aware that of heart disease and its significance, our fellow physicians aren't completely aware. And, and you know, there are many physicians who aren't even aware that heart disease is a bigger health issue than cancer or anything else. And I think... Um, the other message we would really want to get out to women is, is women present with symptoms that are classic for angina, which is substernal chest discomfort. So the majority of women who are going to present with heart disease, they will present with symptoms identical to that of men. 30% of women present with atypical symptoms. So that is a large population. So the key is to be aware of the classic symptoms and also be aware that they are atypical symptoms that they may experience and not dismiss those symptoms. And not only that, you know, the, the, the data is clear as well regarding um, pain sensation. Women feel pain differently than men. They, this, this is probably one of the reasons that a lot of women minimize their symptoms or think it's not as severe. For instance, um, one person may feel that, oh my gosh, a 5 out of 10 chest discomfort, I am dying right now. Whereas a woman may feel, oh, that's nothing. Let me just pay attention to that later. And because of that, this is why women present to the emergency room much later than men when they are having heart attack symptoms. And that significantly changes how they are managed in the emergency room or in the hospital. So the sooner you get to the hospital, the better you are treated. The sooner you get to the hospital, the sooner we can get the blood supply normalized again. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. We're talking about heart health, particularly for women, with Dr. Hatfield and Dr. Thompson. Now, you have a lot of information on your website about heart-healthy tips, and we've talked about exercise. We've talked about eating right and in moderation. What are some other heart-healthy tips that people should know about? Well, maintaining a very um, healthy weight is important, Um, and when you're choosing um, foods, choose healthy foods. Uh, it's really, it falls under mindful eating. So instead of um, having your meals in front of the television or reading a book when you're eating, actually look at your plate. Pay attention to what you're eating. You're more likely to make healthier choices. Um, beyond exercise, eating healthy, maintaining a healthy weight, educate your fellow friends, your family. And, you know, the, the heart disease is starts at a very young age for women. Women do not suddenly, you know, turn 65 and start having heart disease. They do not suddenly turn 70 and have heart disease. Whatever heart disease is is discovered at the time they have symptoms has been um, manifesting itself subclinically for decades. And so the earlier you um, hold on to and grasp to and, and exercise heart-healthy habits, the better it is for you. And as Dr. Thompson said, stop focusing on your family history because that's not anything you could do anything about. We are also going into the era of um, personalization of medicine. You know, we, we have mapped out our genetic genome. We have discovered that there are certain genes that predisposes you to cardiovascular disease. In fact, there are at least 60 known genes that are known to predispose you to premature cardiovascular disease, but only 40 of those genes are via hypertension, high cholesterol, and diabetes. The other 20 genes are unidentifiable. What that means is that you could be 25-year-old woman, skinny, triathlete, don't smoke, you could be a vegan, and yet have cardiovascular disease. And the reason for that is because there's genetic predisposition. But that's not anything we could do anything about right now. Focus on what you can do something about and carry that forward. 
And that any other heart healthy tips, Dr. Thompson? I, get, I, I thank you. I get really practical with my patients sometimes. Um, I'm also the medical director of the cardiac rehabilitation facility for the Cape Cod Healthcare, and I talk a lot with my patients at the rehabilitation center once they've had their cardiovascular event and they really want to make that change, and they know it's a little bit too late, but they they can still make big changes in their lifestyle to prevent a secondary event. A very practical thing that I recommend is to stay away from the center aisles of the grocery store. Walk around the perimeter of the grocery store. If it's fresh, if it has to be refrigerated, perfect. If it hasn't been processed between where it was picked or where it was farmed, excellent. That's the choice for you. And it doesn't matter if it's red meat or fish or broccoli. If it hasn't been processed, that's an easy way to know it's a safe bet for you to be eating. Um, so just very simple, practical tips like that. I also always recommend that patients get very familiar with the nutrition information bar that's on the side of everything that you eat. And if it's not on the side of your apple, great, because it, it means it's healthy. But um, if you look at the nutrition information bar and you look at the ingredients and you can't pronounce those ingredients... Don't put it in your mouth. Great advice. In the, we just have a, a few, a half a minute left here. Any final bits of advice for our listeners out there on heart health? Well, I want to say thank you for listening to this program. <laughs> and please spread the information to your neighbors, your friends, and your family. The more people we educate about heart disease, the better it is for all of us as a community. That's a great way to wrap it up. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Dr. Hatfield and Dr. Thompson, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. And our listeners can find more information about heart health on Cape Cod Healthcare's website, capecodhealth.org slash heart month. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. This podcast is a presentation of Cape Cod Broadcasting, which is solely responsible for its content. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit us at capecodbroadcasting.com.